Hello, hi, I'm Punita here from Huawei Global Training Center and today we're going to discuss about the content eNodeB Device Data Part 2. So let's look into the procedure for configuring an eNodeB Device Data. So when we start, we have to configure the cabinet and the BPO data. So this is more related to the hardware. Number two, we have to configure the RF unit data. Number three is optional, is related to antenna line device. So if you have the device, you have to configure. Otherwise, you can uh, just dis ignore this part. Four is also optional, related to the monitoring unit data. Whether it, it depends whether you are using this PMU device or not. Number five is also optional, related to power module data. Number five, we have to, number six, we have to configure the time data. So this one is related to time information, which is all compulsory, mandatory information that has to be configured. And number seven, we have to configure the clock information. What kind of clock, external clock system that we are going to use for this base station. So basically, we will configure the external clock information under the clock data, under the device data section. So these are basically the flowchart for the configuration of device data. So let's look into the common hardware data list. So we have cabinet and BBU data. So basically we need to add cabinet and subrack. So this is by default the command. So most of the time for the first base station, it will be by default configured. For the remaining ones, we have to configure. Bots in the BBU. So what are the bots we need to add? So head bot, usually mandatory, we need to add UMPT bot and UBPP bot. So this is a mandatory bots that need to be added inside the BBU. For the RF unit data, we need to add RRU chain. So this one is actually related to the fiber connection and we need to add the RRU module. Depends on how many RRU modules that we have configured. So let's look into the details. Add cabinet. So when we add the cabinet, we need to define the cabinet type. So it can be any types of the cabinet. So usually the value virtual is used when the type of cabinet is not specified. If you know the cabinet type, you can configure. But if you're not sure, you can just put it as virtual. So let's look into the command. So since they have already configured that, so I'm going to just list and show you what they have configured for the remaining sites. So list cabinet. So when you list the cabinet, example for this configuration, they have configured as cabinet 0 and the cabinet type is virtual cabinet. Description and location name is actually now, but you have we know that because it is not specified, they have configured as virtual cabinet. Let's look into the second part at subrack. The cabinet number of the subrack is quoted from the add cabinet. So cabinet number is actually follow up from the add cabinet. So you follow back what you have configured earlier. Then subrack 0 will also set by 0 or 1. Usually it should be set 0 or 1 by default. And the subrack type, it depends what kind of subrack you're using. If you're using a BBU 5900, then you have to configure 5900. And we also need to configure the RF subrack if you're using an RFU. So if you're not using RFU, if you're using RRU, then the value will be different. But if you're using RFU unit, then you have to also configure the subrack and usually it will be set 1, 0, 1, 4 or 5. So this one is actually for the RF unit, RF subrack, if you are using an RFU. But if you are using RRU and AAU, then this section will not be needed. This subrack is to add your BPU unit. So let's look into the difference of the command in the actual network. So I'm going to list the subrack and we can see how many subrack that we have. So for this configuration, we have two subrack. Okay, so they are using BBU 5900 and they are using RFU. So that's why we have two subrack. One for BBU, another one for RFU. So let's add an MPT bot. This is the main processing transmission bot, high risk command. So when you are adding the bot, we need to include the cabinet and subrack. So you can follow back what we have quoted earlier. The slot is depending on the slot of the main processing unit. It can be seven or six. So this should be corresponding to your UMPT card and your UBBP card. So let's look into the command. 
so I can display my board to see what I have how many boards I have configured. So when I display the board, there will be a list of boards that we have configured. So I have slot number three LBBP board, slot number seven UMPT board, sixteen and nineteen will be by default. Fan and UPEU, MRRU is actually your RRU unit. So these are the number of boards that I have configured inside my BBO 5900. So I display board to view the configuration. So same similar goes to this. This is to add an LBBP board, high risk command. So basically cabinet and subrack, you follow back what you have configured earlier. Slot number will be based on the UBBP or LBBP status. So, and you have to also define, so board type will be LBBP. You have to define whether this is FDD or TDD network and make sure the hardware capacity is full. So, at a UBBP board will be consider aiming for GUL co-based board processing board. So, this is our latest board. So, when adding it, you need to define the baseband work standard. Okay, but if you're using LT, FDD and TDD, only one can be supported because if you want to use both, it cannot be simultaneously supported. It can be only one at a particular time. All right. For this example, they are using either one only. And for the hardware capacity, it is only used for UMTS. For LTE, it is always set as full. And to add a fan and UPEU, so usually by default, they are added. Okay. By default, they are added. So usually for the first base station, you don't have to add fan or UPEU unless you find that they are missing, then you need to add. Even though the hardware is there, sometimes it might be missing from the configuration. But most of the cases by default, they are added already. So you don't have to add this command actually for fan and UPEU. Q&A session. The UBBP board is newly introduced boards in single RAN 9.0, ERAN 7.0, aiming to support GUL co baseband processing. Yes or no? Yes, this statement is correct. So, the summary of this section E node B device data. We have discussed about procedure of configuring E node B device data, common hardware data list, add, how to add a cabinet, how to add a subtract, how to add an MPT board how to add an LBPP board and UBPP board. And the last session, we discuss about how to add a fan and a UPEU card. That's all from me. Hope you enjoy the session. Thank you. Bye.